Third Eye Analysis of The Chosen. Right, greetings. I'm Brother Spence with this third eye analysis. The third eye analysis of the Chosen series, which has been popular for a little while from what I hear. I just kind of tuned in to the Chosen series uh, about a month and a half, maybe two months ago. My lady and I have watched uh, the first three episodes. Well, she's watched like maybe the, the first episode and maybe half of the second. She goes to sleep a lot on the couch. But it really is a good, entertaining, spiritually inspiring video or spiritually inspiring, you know, TV series on uh, Apple TV. I think there's a live stream, a couple other uh, sites where they they show this series. I think they're in season three now. I'm in season one. The third episode and the first three episodes of the first season. My analysis thus far, uh, in between watching Under the Banner, when me and my lady have couch time in our evenings, watching Under the Banner of Heaven, which is much darker than The Chosen. But The Chosen is real because the Bible, the basic good news gospel, of Jesus Christ, or what the world calls Jesus Christ, the true Christ, the Jesus, whose real name is Yahshua, or Yahushua, it is Joshua, or Jah salvation, through God's salvation, and the personality of the Son, the true Messiah, or the Christ, that is the Christ, or Christos, the anointed one, in the first advent, as Messiah as the one true prophet of all prophets in fulfillment of the Torah, to bring fulfillment to the Torah and the faithful Hebrew Israelite prophets beforehand to this present time within the core body of Messiah, with that core body of Christ. We have plenty of evidence through scriptures. These are some scriptures and verses I have written down over five or six years ago regarding the basic facts of the Bible. <clears throat> now, let's analyze the first two or three episodes. Okay, so far I see a lot of the, not disciples, or not only the disciples, but a lot of the Yahudim and fellow ethnic Israelites in that setting, in that time period concerning the Gospels, um, that have more of an authentic look. It's directed, from my understanding, written and directed of a um, fellow Christian brother or a universal born-again brother in Christ through Messiah, you know, through Jesus Christ, through Yahweh's grace or God's grace in Yeshua, you know, through Jah's grace. And I see that the, the look of the Yahudim or the Jews, for those that don't know, Yahudim is the Hebrew uh, pronunciation for Jews in translation to the abbreviation of Yehuda or the tribe of Judah being the Jews. And what we know is the majority of Eurocentric Jewish people today, all due respect, there's some that look more like them, modern day uh, people of Middle Eastern descent and even of modern Israeli Jewish descent, different types of the uh, other Yahudim known as the popular Jewish people today, um, all due respect. But there's more of authentic Yemenite, Sephardic and Yemenite looking Jews amongst the other Jews. You even have more darker skin, Middle Eastern, more Arab looking, authentic Jewish looking or authentic Hebrew Israelite looking people with darker skin. Some would say more Middle Eastern looking, but in the mix there are some actual, more authentic falashas of the original Jews, or the original Yahudim, on the, should I say, the 
ethnic Hebrew Israelites of all original 12 tribes, according to lineage and the physical features, not just so-called Middle Eastern, but Afrocentric, original Afro-Shemitic, you know, images <clears throat> of actual so-called black people and African Hebrew Israelites and Ethiopian Jews, you know, Ethiopian Yahudim ethnically that, that are in the mix. So it has more of an authentic uh, look to the original Israelites, the Jews in that time of, of Jesus Christ himself, of Yeshua himself, being an ethnic Yehudaite, an ethnic Jew or an ethnic Israelite according to flesh, from the tribe of Judah, that tribe of Levi, but born again or actually conceived as many would say, conceived by the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, that set apart spirit, as we say in the Hebrew, the Ruach HaKodesh, or the Memphis Kadutz, as we also say in the Amharic, or the Ethiopic, Royal Amharic tongue. So it's the set apart spirit, that true Holy Spirit, in which Yeshua, or Jesus Christ, as Savior, and as the true Messiah in the first advent, you know, the anointed one, was conceived through the Virgin Mariam, that many know today as the Virgin Mary, but Mariam, uh, that an ethnic, also an ethnic Jehudaite woman, an ethnic Israelite woman according to flesh and blood. And of course, his biological father, Yosef, or Joseph, the carpenter, also uh, also kind of brings that to a completion in a mystery and many controversies of whether Yeshua or Jesus Christ, the Messiah, our Lord and Savior, in the first advent was really uh, conceived by the Holy Spirit, conceived by the Ruach HaKodesh through the virgin's womb or, you know, whatever it might be, still anointed through Yosef's seed. That physical seed. Um, not to get into that, but you know, I like this interpretation of this version of the gospel because it seems like postmodern day Christians, a lot of more potentially authentic or genuine modern day Christians are catching up. Hallelujah. Praise Jah. Well, thank God for that. So, with all that being said. That's good. Maybe we're still in the gradual process, even in these last of last days, amongst most postmodern forms of Christianity. Despite the lures of counterfeit Christianities and other false religions and denominations out there, the religious side, or should I say the dark side of religion that divides, you know, there's a good side in this evolution process because universally, we as people, whether, you know, it doesn't matter your title or belief system or lack of, whether your fellow, you know, Torah observant, born again Israelites, spiritual fulfilled Israelites through Messiah, you know, through Christ, as more pre-Constantine Christians or true Orthodox Christians or, or, you know, any other type of Catholic or Protestant potential genuine Christian of any denomination or cultural background or Muslim or fellow Torah observant Yehudi, you know, the types of uh, faithful Jews and uh, agnostic Jews and agnostic Gentiles and even atheists and fellow Buddhas and Buddhists out there and philosophers and enlighteners of all walks of life beyond the boundaries of so-called titles or religion or denomination or lack of. You know, um, Universally, you know, we are evolving as the truth vibrations of our solar sun. Yes, that divine solar, S-U-N, of Father's creation, of Yahweh's or Jehovah's creation, all of Jah's creation through Jah's sun, that solar sun, that naturally gives us that energy and that life force within this neck of the universe. Within this part of the Milky Way, as they call it, the Milky Way galaxy, or our particular solar system, 
throughout this galaxy, throughout many galaxies of this universe. Then you have multiple universes and dimensions throughout space and time of Hashem's creation or Almighty God's creation. So we have to be open-minded. We have to learn from each other and to rise up with, with positive vibration and to strive to be peacemakers of all cultures, of all people, beyond the boundaries of so-called language barriers or so-called race, so-called skin color, gender, once again, religious background or lack of religious background. And once again, it's not about religion. It's about true God consciousness. It's about a true spiritual way of life, true righteous liberty when it comes to true faith for anybody. And so, but to speak to both uh, fellow pre-Constantine, you know, fellow Orthodox and modern day Christians who take upon the name Christian, Christ man, whether you're a fellow brother and a sister, a fellow brother or sister called to be in Christ, called to be in Messiah in these renewed covenant times, you know, we, we digest these things differently. Very, very, very similar, yet very different filters and perspectives. And, you know, a good friend of mine, a good brother of mine, who comes over to the house once or twice a week to play music. He plays guitar. He's a very good guitar player. He sings a little bit. I uh, play bongo drums and hand percussion, and sometimes I'll sing with him and harmonize a little bit. But uh, we have a good time. And he happens to be a Christian brother, raised Pentecostal, modern day uh, Pentecostal influenced, um, genuine Christian brother, you know, my brother in Messiah. But he said, I suggest you check out the Chosen series in the past month and a half or the past two months. So I have in little segments. And once again, thus far, the first three episodes of season one. I know I'm far behind many people who have already been catching up with the present third season, all due respect. <clears throat> but my view so far is that a lot of these Christian, postmodern day Protestant Christian directors, screen popped up, <clears throat> more of these potential postmodern day Christian directors and writers are getting closer to the authenticity of Christ himself, Yeshua, or Jesus Christ himself. In his humanity, as well as his, as well as the disciples, as well as the the Jews in that time, and other ethnic Israelites of, of different tribes in that time of, of Jesus Christ, or that time of Yeshua as Messiah in the first advent, in that first incarnation as Mashiach, um, as uh, Al Masih, to bring fulfillment to the Torah and the prophets, um, in generations to come or possibly even this generation in, in uh, possibly months or just a few more years to come, that spiritual veil is being lifted that much more, more of the divine truth vibrations. That's right, the truth vibrations from the solar sun revealed to all of us about the S-O-N, the son of Elohim the Son of God, as Lord and Savior, and the true Messiah, the one true prophet of all prophets, and the true Mashiach in the first advent, as Jesus Christ, or Joshua, the Messiah. Um, he brought fulfillment to the Torah. So when you're clashing with the the Pharisees of that time, of, of Yeshua's time, or the time of Jesus Christ, you know, in that first advent as Messiah, is that suffering servant, the carpenter's son, you know, Jesus or Yeshua, the Christ, the anointed one. Um, you see that clashing of the Pharisees like Nicodemus. We know according to the scriptures or Salika, according to the verses within the gospel, within the Hadith Kedan or the uh, Brahadasha, as we should say in the Hebrew, the Renewed Covenant, but in the basic Good News Gospels, we know about Nicodemus and his conversion to accept Yeshua, 
to accept Jesus Christ as the Messiah and the Son of God and as Lord and Savior in that first advent. So he converted, we know. And it's very interesting. In the very beginning, Nicodemus is a genuine fellow God-fearing, you know, fellow Elohim-fearing and loving person as a faithful Yehudi. You know, as a rabbi, and even though as a Pharisee, there was pharisaical doctrines, the extra traditions of man from Talmudic law added to the Torah within the same original Hebrew scriptures within the Torah, within the first five books of what we call the Bible today, even the modern day Christian Bible, um, you know, uh, tells you not to add to, you know, for example, in Deuteronomy chapter four, verse two, Hashem says, the name Yahuwah, Jehovah says, Yahweh says, <clears throat> or Almighty God, the Father says, do not add or take away from the Torah, from the commandments. Jesus Christ, or Yeshua, fulfills the Torah, but when you have a budding of doctrines with the Pharisees of his time, not much different than the Pharisees of this present time, not just within Judaism, but counterfeit Christianities and Islamism, as opposed to true Islam as a way of life, Judaism, as opposed to true fulfilled Judaism as a way of life, and the counterfeit Christian faith, as opposed to the original Judeo-Christian, Ethiopian Orthodox, Tawahedo Christian faith, which is parallel to that Israelite faith in Messiah, called to be in Jesus Christ, in these renewed covenant times, through Yah's grace, in Yeshua, the Messiah. And then, of course, we have many of I and I, more fulfilled Israelites and the Christian through his majesty, through Haile Selassie, his imperial majesty, the king of kings in Christ, Yeshua, through Jesus Christos as Messiah in the first advent. So we have all these different perceptions and it seems like even the personality, not just the personality, but the image of the actor who plays Jesus, who plays Yeshua in the Chosen series. Very interesting. Personality wise, it's more accurate to the personality of Christ, of, of Jesus Christ, and as many say, Yeshua, the Messiah in the first advent. Even his physical appearances, although more light-skinned, like a modern-day Eurocentric Jew or somebody of, you know, olive skin or lighter, olive, you know, maybe lighter olive skin of uh, Middle Eastern uh, descent or even modern Israeli Jewish descent. You see different features within the actor who plays Jesus and <clears throat> not so much the skin color. His, uh, his skin tone was of more melanin, you know, more melanin color. It was a melanin skin tone of bronze. The scriptures and the verses within the Bible reveal the skin of bronze, the hair of wool, more like an authentic Ethiopian Yehudi, according to facial features and according to lineage. And of course, God's love through Christ is for anybody who accepts. I mean, even Ethiopia, modern day Judeo-Christian Ethiopia is for all those who accept that true African Zion, that African Zion, you know, and even collectively what we know today as the modern Israeli Jewish state of Israel. Despite the Israeli influences or the Israeli government powers and the extreme Zionist, or the pseudo Zionism that goes that goes down today to confuse people. Despite all that, you know, collectively, you know, it is part of that land, you know, given to the great prophet Abraham through Isaac and Jacob. So my view, my third eye analysis is that the Yahweh's spirit or Jah's spirit, say the universe, the father of creation. You know, our Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Mother, and even right here on Mother Earth of Hashem's creation, or Almighty God's creation. Here we are as little gods, in the lightness and the image of Ha Elohim, or the true Allah Hayyim, you know, Almighty God and the angels, as above, so below, receiving these truth vibrations to eventually, as time goes on in this regeneration, in this regeneration, you know, we're getting closer to accuracy of who are the original people of Israel, according to lineage and according to spirit of faith. 
And yes, once again, God's salvation is for all nations, all peoples, all races, all nationalities of those who truly, re truly repent. Not those who claim to repent and pretend to be righteous and put on some kind of act and honor God with their mouth and yet their hearts are far from him. You know, not the fakers out there, because you have a lot of Judases and betrayers out there. The original 12 tribe, you know, should, should I say the original 12 disciples of Jesus Christ was Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. So we have to be careful today as modern day sons of man, as true born again, true begotten again sons of Almighty God. You know, we have to always watch out for the Judases. They come in all shapes and forms and colors and even of our own kind or of other nations. We as human beings who are righteous and accept these things are called to be into Jah's kingdom or Hashem's kingdom through Messiah, through that true core body of Christ. However, at the same time, you have what is called dispensation theology in a lot of forms of postmodern day counterfeit Christianities. No blanket statements at all. No blanket statements at all. With that being said, it's not all churches or all forms of Christianities, obviously. I give much credit to the original Orthodox Christian churches, not just Ethiopian Orthodox, but Greek Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, Egyptian or Zion Coptic. Um, but at the same time, we have to see the contrast of that was, you know, the pharisaical doctrines or the tradition of elders, the tradition of elders like Nicodemus had conformed to before his conversion that kept him from seeing Yeshua or Jesus Christ as Messiah, as the Son of God and the living Torah made flesh, the Word of God made flesh right before his eyes, both in the spiritual and the physical realm. He denied that until he, he, he began to see. Same thing with the, the Apostle Paul. Same thing with the great Apostle Shaul, as we should say in his original Hebrew name, but either way, the great Apostle Paul had the same conversion. At first, he resisted that because there are certain doctrines of man that pollute every every uh, origin, you know, every original teaching of, of any enlightener, any wise man or prophet, even the great enlightened one, uh, Buddha, the great Buddha himself. A lot of his teachings and philosophies are twisted into what mankind creates as a category and tag it with a new title called Buddhism. You know, with that being said, nothing wrong with saying Buddhism or even Christianity. If you're speaking of the true Christianity as a righteous way of life, you know, true Judaism as opposed to Judaism, true Islam as a way of life, as opposed to Islamism and all these isms and schisms that divide the people. See, the Enlighteners, the faithful Hebrew Israelite prophets, Yeshua HaMashiach or Jesus Christ, the one true prophet of all prophets and the Messiah in the first advent. You know, the second advent through his imperial majesty, the king of kings, you know, setting this example <clears throat> to break down the barriers that have divided mankind for many generations. Um, <clears throat> but Nicodemus, going back to Nicodemus, as it reveals in the first couple episodes of this chosen series, uh, I, I find it very interesting because he's teaching his disciples and his followers to not go fishing, you know, don't fish, or, you know, don't go fishing on the seven day Shabbat, that you seven day Sabbath. And there's a lot more Judaic, you know, basic Judaic and Hebraic references in the first couple of episodes. I've noticed a lot of talk about Shabbat, as they say, Sabbath in the Hebrew, a lot of talk about the true seven day Sabbath. I'm, I'm quite impressed, you know, that veil is lifting uh, in a universal sense, but there's still a long ways to go. Uh, with different cultural aspects of, you know, what is truly written in the gospel and what is truly written in the Bible. Um, but it seems like even despite the lack of melanin, despite, despite the lack of darker skin tone, it seems like this actor who plays Jesus in the Chosen series has similar facial features, I know, as his imperial majesty, Karamawi Haile Selassie I. Check it out. Now, it seems like on one side, you have those that veer too far right, way too far right into Romanism and more the counterfeit side of dispensationalism or counterfeit Christianity. Then you have those that veer too, way too far left 
You have those that veer way too far left into Judaism as opposed to true fulfilled Judaism as a way of life, according to what the Torah actually says, what the Bible actually says. Um, and you reject the so-called New Testament when it's really one testament, one Torah from Genesis to Revelation and so forth. But those who veer too right, no, they veer too far right, but still accept Jesus Christ, still accept the basic good news gospel, which is still the most relevant, most important thing in the beginning to receive, you know, the good news, to receive Hashem's love and salvation through the Son, you know, through the Messiah. But, you know, that dispensationalism that tells you, well, oh, the commandment's been done away with, that's Old Testament, or in New Testament times. And yes, we are in present renewed covenant times, but it's one testament. And, you know, there's nowhere it says that you can't really go fishing on the Sabbath. Or any day of the week that you choose to rest, so-called Saturday, so-called Sunday, seventh day, first day. It's supposed to be the seventh day, according to the actual commandment, but we're not going to get into that now. But with that being said, no, on the Sabbath... Even the true seven-day Sabbath, there's no law saying that you can't go fishing. It says to relax. I've I've gone hiking. <clears throat> I've been camping on Shabbat. I play in a live reggae band on stage on Shabbat to do good on the Shabbat, do good on the Sabbath as Jesus Christ instructs us, as our Lord and Savior Yeshua instructs us in the Spirit, Josh Spirit. So <clears throat> we don't want to be pharisaical about it and lean too far left. But then you don't want to lean too far right because it's not just anything. There are certain things we're supposed to do on the seven day Sabbath, like keep the Sabbath. We're not supposed to work. <clears throat> we're not supposed to work at the occupations. We're not supposed to work at our jobs. We should try to have our jobs set to where we have that day off. If we don't, of course, there's grace in that, especially through Christ, especially, especially through Mashiach, especially through the Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua. But at the same time, even Jesus said, or even Yeshua says, even Christ himself says, those who love me, in St. John 14 and 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. I and the Father are one. You will keep my commandments. It says all throughout the so-called New Testament, even though it's one testament, the so-called New Testament, or Renewed Covenant times in 1 John chapter 2, talks about the importance of keeping the commandments to hold the testimony of Jesus Christ or that testimony of Yeshua, the Messiah, <clears throat> we have to keep the commandments. If those who say, I abide in him, I abide in Christ through God's love, through Jah love, but do not keep the commandments, is a liar. It says in Revelation 12, you know, verse 17, it talks about those who keep the commandments, the true elect, or those who keep the commandments and hold the testimony of, of, of Yeshua or Jesus Christ. And all these scriptures I've written down about five or six years ago regarding these things in the Bible, all throughout the Bible. So, um, there's good artwork over here, good artwork of the tree of life and that balance of yin and yang, that spiritual balance you know, within that, that, that Christ mind. But <clears throat> we have to uh, come out of confusion in this evolution process of awakening. You know, and I think that's the truth vibrations reaching out to all people, you know, once again, fellow true pre-Constantine Christians, fellow spiritual Israelites and ethnic Israelites called to be in Christ, fellow Muslims, fellow faithful Torah observant Yahudim, whether of lineage or of the heart, because even the Apostle Paul or Shaul says one is a Yehudi, one is a faithful Jew according to circumcision of the heart. Through Messiah or through Christ. So we begin to like find our true identity, even as true Christians. Once again, nothing wrong with calling yourself a Christian. You're Christ man. Or, you know, it's Sanskrit for the Christ man or little Christ. Christ itself or Christos is Greek for the anointed one. So it's Mashiach in the Hebrew. In the original Hebrew tongue, it's Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus the Messiah. You know, and no one comes to the Father except through the Son. Through receiving Messiah, receiving Jesus Christ or Yeshua as, as who he is, as Lord and Savior and Son of God, died upon the cross, confessing that Almighty God or the Most High Yahweh 
the Most High Jah, the Father, raised him up on the third day after his crucifixion and impalement upon the cross, upon the stake. Is that final sacrificial lamb, that Passover lamb, that final atonement in which we're covered. So we are the temple as far as the metaphysical body of Messiah. Very beautiful, very interesting. And we have scriptures and verses all throughout your so-called Old Testament and your so-called New Testament. Once again, which is really, you know, your so-called New Testament is really one testament. From Genesis to Revelation and so forth. You know? So that is my outlook on it. You know, I think it reveals that in the series, but uh, Jesus or Yeshua rightfully you know, breaks down that false doctrine of, well, you can't do this from the Shabbat. That's tradition of elders added to the actual written Torah. The actual written Torah with the commandments and the statutes are still there as the foundation. So these, these things where you add to, see one side in counterfeit Christianity, meaning too far right, not all forms of Christianity, but a lot of forms of Christianity are, is really dispensationalism. Too much Romanism and schisms got you leaning too far right, got you breaking the commandments, got you spending money and doing business and working on Shabbat. When you actually have that day off, you're still choosing to go out and spend money and <clears throat> do yard work for 10 hours and go out and spend money and, and other people are expect to work when you're supposed to be resting. That's, that's hypocritical. Then you got people leaning too far left that have this claim to have this reverence to Torah and keeping the commandments. But then they reject, they, they get caught up in Judaism and reject Messiah, reject the whole package of the New Testament. So it is the narrow path in which Jesus Christ or Yeshua himself says the narrow path is hard to find, but you must find it. The majority of people and sheep, not the sheep of Elohim through Messiah, but the sheep of the world, choose the wide gate that leads to destruction. So, some food for thought. We don't want to go too far right and just break the Sabbath. You break one commandment amongst the basic main Ten Commandments, you break all the commandments. The Ten Words, the Asadat, the Barim, the Ten Commandments. And then you don't want to claim to keep the commandments and be one of God's chosen ones, and then you reject the atonement. You might as well destroy the temple in Old Covenant times, just destroy the temple and the tabernacle, because without the atonement and without a temple, where is your atonement? Without a physical temple, they've claimed to rebuild for many years now. But there's still no actual complete temple in the modern state of Israel or anywhere else on the face of the earth. Then where is your atonement? Of course, there has to be Messiah. And there was and there is Messiah, both in the first and second advent through his majesty, the King of Kings in Christ, Yeshua. That is my analysis on the chosen ones. Thank you.